today I thought I would show you some of my favourite bits from the drugstore and think of this as like a really beefy version of the budget bike category on my blog and if you haven't seen that before I will link it up below but it's a post that I try and do like once every two weeks or so and it's things that I love that are under a tenner and if it's under a tenner and I love it in it goes there and I've also done drugstore videos in the past of my favourites so I will link those up below and I'm going to try and not cover ground that I covered in those so these are all sort of more like new bits or things that I haven't mentioned but I've loved for ages they've kind of like slipped under the radar and although I do tend to use more high-end things I don't care how much a product costs if it does what it says on the tin and it's awesome then that's all I'm happy with and I think for me because when I was a student like living on five pounds a week I used to go wild in the aisles of boots and especially when student loan time came that was like always the most amazing day three times a year I used to have quite the good spree in boots <laughs> But I guess now, like since I've graduated, I've tried to explore beauty brands that perhaps I couldn't when I was a student. So I think that sort of explains why I use a bit of a mix of everything. But I'm going to get started with some hair care bits. And these I've been using on off for like a few months now. I think it was repackaged and kind of reformulated. It's an old range by John Frieda and it's their luxurious volume one. And although I am so into the Bumble and Bumble surf shampoo conditioner duo, these actually do a really good job. They don't weigh your hair down, they don't dry it out too much. It just adds a bit of like oomph to your hair and I really, really like These are a really nice duo to use for anyone who likes a bit more of like a textured, voluminous look to your hair and I like the scent of those as well. And then the next one I have gone through countless tubes of and it's the Rimmel Instant Tan Sun Shimmer. Now this is the light matte one. But back in the day when I was seriously into tanning, I went for the dark matte one. And it's just like an instant tanner, like a wash on, wash off type. This one is water resistant, which is good because I usually wear this if I'm out on like a night out. And you just want to tan up your legs. I'm the worst person at properly fake tanning my legs. So I kind of fake tan my upper half. So I look all right in like t-shirts and stuff. But in terms of like tanning my legs, it just never, ever happens. I'll like tan my feet, but I just will never tan my legs. So on a night out, I need to sort of make everything match up if I've got my legs out, and this is perfect. This is just like the best instant glow on it goes type thing, and the light one is actually quite nice for daytime. There's been like a few occasions where I've just looked uber pasty and thought, damn, I better like put something on my arms before I go out, and I just pop this onto a mitt, on it goes, boom, done, love it, and I'm very happy they now do a water resistant one because when I was back at uni the amount of times I had drinks spilled on me and then I'd have like drip marks going down my leg which is not the most attractive. Now on to skincare and I've actually been trying like quite a few things but nothing has wowed me as much as like the Emma Hardy cleansing balm, what else have I been using like Origins moisturisers, all my kind of staples that I use in my skincare routine, nothing has really matched up for that and I don't want to recommend anything that I don't think is like seriously wow so i'm going to leave that category out but i think kate and meg have both done affordable skincare videos so i'm going to link those two up below so i'm going to skip that go straight on to makeup and this one is the bourgeois healthy mix serum foundation and i think bourgeois kind of bring it when it comes to bases actually their original healthy mix i did not like i just found it too oily and a bit too heavy for my skin the newly formulated radiance reveal one i liked better and then this one i think i like the most and I, i'm the shade 52 in it i'm wearing it now it's like quite a good match i really like this because it's actually not too heavy i don't find it to be very full coverage on my skin at all i find it to be quite low to medium but i really like that it's just good if you just have a day where it's kind of like a lazy skin day you don't need too much perfecting but you just want like a bit of a light base on and I apply this with my fingers goes on really nicely and you doesn't go cakey the next one is a recently rediscovered one and it's one that I used to use all the darn time and then I just thought why haven't you been repurchasing this it's really nice and it's the L'Oreal La Touche Magique Perfect Matte and I have the shade Ivory Beige in it I actually really like these kind of like YSL type concealers because they're just really easy to like have in your bag and then you can just quickly like stripe it on, blend it in, and just be done. I think it comes in around four shades, maybe a few more, which isn't fabulous, but I find that this is a nice match for me. And although it says highlighting concealer, I would not say it is very highlighting. I would actually say it's quite matte in terms of a liquid consistency, but it's not as matte as something like the Collection 2000 Lasting Perfection Concealer. That's the favorite, which I thought I wouldn't mention in here because I mention it all the time. But I do find this works kind of equally nicely 
over spots or um, dark circles as well. And this is one that I just kind of throw in my bag because I don't mind if it gets a little bit battered. I think it's around seven-ish pounds. And then there's a few like star standouts in this pack that I've got here and this is one of them. It is awesome. I've seen so many people picking this up recently and it's the Max Factor Miracle Touch Creamy Blush. And my old housemate at uni actually used to use um, a different shade in this. I can't remember what shade it was, but it was one of the more ready ones. So I always used to watch her use it and be like quite intrigued. And I picked up the shade Soft Pink and it is I'm just actually quite amazed. I think this is like 6.99. The packaging is uber crappy and I'm not sure you particularly get that much of product. I haven't like put my finger to the bottom so I don't know how deep it goes but I don't think it's that deep. But I love the formula I'm not saying about creamy blushes that they're always a bit too like powdery to be used on the lips and then they go a bit like powdery on the cheeks or they're too creamy for the cheeks and it just slips off but they're good on the lips. This one works fabulously on the lips. It's almost like a kind of balmy texture. It's just really really smooth. I've got it on my lips today and then it just blends out to like the most gorgeous, flattering suits, like universal pink suits, every one shade. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm not huge on blush, sometimes I'll go a bit crazy for it, other times I won't, but this is just, it's like one of those brightening shades, you just put it on and you feel like brightened and a bit perkier, and I just really, really like this, and it's equally gorgeous on the lips as well. I've checked out the other shades, I think there's like, Four if you're in like a small boots or super drug and like six if you're in a bigger one. You know like how it doesn't have all the range in all of them. But I haven't really seen another colour in it that really tickles my fancy but soft pink is just love. Then a brow product and I actually really like the Rimmel Pro Pencil Eyebrow one. You know the one I mean. But this one is gorgeous as well and it's the Maybelline Master Shape Brow Pencil. I have the shade soft brown. I've got this on my brows today and it's one of those ones that's got like the little spoolie on one end and then the little drawery thing on the other end as well and this shade is such a nice shade it's just not too it's like not too dark it's not too light it's not too warm it's not too grey it's just a really nice match for my brows and it's quite like a small little nub as well so it's nice you don't tend to go too overboard it doesn't look too drawn on and it's actually quite hard which means you're never going to go like too crazy with it. I really like the Laura Mercier brow pencil. It's actually a bit too soft and you can sometimes end up like drawing your brows up here because it just goes a bit wild. But this is quite hard, which means you have to press down quite a lot. But then that's a good thing because it means that you're never going to have like too much product going onto your eyebrows. That's another one that I tend to like throw in my bag. It's always good to have a little brow comb. I'm the person like combing my brows in the corner of a restaurant because they're blooming massive. So <laughs> it is always good to have a little brow comb with you. And then the next one, this is like cliche to be mentioned in a drugstore video because I think everyone loves them. And it's the Maybelline Color Tattoo 24 hour ones. And I have the shade On and On Bronze, which is like, cold classic that everyone loves and then this one which is pink gold and I like this one because it's a bit um all that glitters -y because it's kind of pinky champagne -y. really nice like wash of colour all over the lids very similar to the Estee Lauder stay on shadow paint in pink sink actually but I've got this one on my eyes today the on and on bronze and it is just lush I did try some other shades of this I had permanent taupe I think it's called but that on me just made me look like I had a black eye because it was matte, it didn't have any shimmer in and it just looked a bit like I've been punched in the face. But this shade is gorgeous and it just, you can actually really make it quite subtle. You can just pop it on with your finger, which is what I've done today, and like blend it out and it doesn't really look like too much or you can really like press it on, like layer it up, layer it up, layer it up and give yourself a really nice kind of, it's a difficult colour to explain, it's like an off gold like a kind of antiqued gold. Then another colour product, and I think colour is where I experiment in the drugstore more because if you want like a red lipstick but you're not really sure what's going to suit you, you might as well go for something cheaper first to see if, it, if you're brave enough for it and then you can always invest in something a bit higher end. And lipstick wise, Sleek do some awesome ones and this is the True Colour Lipstick in Papaya Punch and it's a matte texture and it's, I've seen this on so many different skin tones and it just works beautifully on everyone. It's a really nice mix of kind of like red, coral and pink but uber bright and also 
kind of stains your lips, but that's, that's a good thing. It's really super long lasting and I like matte textures when it comes to lipsticks. I really like the Rimmel Kate Moss matte lipsticks as well because matte is just where it's at when it comes to lips because they just stay in place so much longer. And then finally I have two things for nails and these are something that I've been using for like months. I think I've had these since last year actually. And they're the Kiss Nail Tools. I think they're about six or seven pounds from Boots. And you've got like a cuticle pusher backer, a like little scoopery thing, like a cuticle trimmer, and then like another pushy backy thing. And I think I have mentioned these before in monthly favorites, but they're just something I use every single time I do my nails. I just use this one to push like push the cuticle back and then this one to get going out, which is really gross, but that's what I do. Um, and these are just like the main part of my manicure routine. Then finally, nail polishes, cheap nail polishes I kind of can't get enough of at the moment. The Rimmel Salon Pro ones are just like, I'm addicted. I just have to get like all of them every time I go in. I see if they've got certain colours. I'm really, really, really lusting after the bluey shade, which basically looks like Nails Inc. Baker Street, but I can't really help myself. But Hip Hop and Summer Orange are just awesome, awesome shades. I have done a post on those, so I'll link that up below. But another cheapy one, and I think these are under five pounds, I think they're about four pound 50 each, are the Maybelline Forever Strong Superstay Gel Nail Color Seven Days. Wow, do these polishes last on your nails? Like, I wouldn't say seven days, I'd say more like five days, but, and then like a few little chips appear and you think, yep, yeah, it's time to repaint. But also the color range is so nice. Like so often with drugstore, ranges like I'm an Essie girl, I am, but so often with drugstore ranges you look and there's like a few like weird shimmery colours but these all looked gorgeous, there's like a really nice cornflower blue, some amazing reds. I have the shade Mint for Life and then this one is Hot Salsa, gorgeous, gorgeous shades. I really like this one actually, it's like a, it's like a neony pink Coral. Very difficult colour to pinpoint exactly, but Mint for Life is gorgeous as well. That is it for now, and like I said, if you haven't seen the Budget Buy category on my blog, I will link that up below, and if you ever spot me within like a mile radius of a Boots, then turn me in the opposite direction because I can't leave without picking up a nail polish and a Boots meal deal. But I really hope you like this video, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye!